Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel once again. So I'm going to discuss quite a few clinical scenarios which I shared with one of my students, uh, which came from Tamil Nadu MJ Universities, right? So if you're ready for the game, put your as usual a big smile and let's start discussing, fine? So this is primarily for students who are in the second prof, going to attend the second prof, or who started the second prof, if you want to solve scenario-based questions, which is going to be a bread and butter in your LAQs. Let's go and read. See, the first thing, what I'm going to read here is, it's a 25-year-old person, uh, RTA victim, right? Uh, presented with rapid pulse, cold, clammy, cyanotic skin. Tachypnea landed to the emergency ward, unconscious state. What's the diagnosis? Classify the disease and about the etiopathogenesis. So here is a road traffic accident. RTA is a road traffic accident person who was brought to the emergency room with unconscious state or altered sensorium and a cold, clammy skin. Skin is becoming cold and clammy because there's no blood supply to the skin. Altered consciousness, same reason, there's no blood supply properly to the brain and the parenchyma, right? So RTA, the patient would have definitely lost lots and lots of blood. So this is a very classical case of an hemodynamic shock, all right, right? Or a hypovolemic shock, okay? So it's a classical case of an hypovolemic shock. Shock is very, very important from a second year point of view. Hypovolemic shock or an um, septic shock. These are two things which can come in long answer. Rarely anaphylactic shock can also come. Hypovolemic shock and septic shock, the pathogenesis is different. Hypovolemia, anaphylaxis, everything kind of more or less same. Right? Hypovolemic shock, you have to talk about more about the reversible and the compensatory and the irreversible stage. In a septic shock, you have to talk about the inflammatory and uh, anti-inflammatory and the metabolic changes, right? End of the day, the gross and microscopy will not change, but the pathogenic part alone will a little bit change from hypovolemic from septic shock, right? That's a classical scenario and you can expect this in your upcoming exam as well, fine? So now let's go to the second one. A 50-year-old person, present uh, vegetarian, present with pallor, sorry, pallor, paresthesias of the extremities, okay, and uh, a beefy tongue. You know the answer right away, right? What's the diagnosis? How will you investigate the patient further to establish the diagnosis? Classify the RBC disorders according to the etiology. See here, I would say this is a slight glitch in the question. It should have been vegan, okay? Vegetarian doesn't land perfectly right uh, because ve vegetarian diet will not cause B12 deficiencies, but everything else. Paresthesia, again, not a folic acid deficiency. Neurological deficits will be seen only in case of a B12 deficiency, right? So there's a classical B12 deficiency here. Examination as a beefy tongue, again, a classical finding B12 uh, or amegaloblastic anemia, right? With this, I would say pinpoint to a B12 deficiency, but this, you can, if you're confident enough, put and say it should have been a vegan diet because vegetarian diet will not cause a B12 deficiency, only veganism, where there's no animal protein or the, plant, uh, the milk protein is going to cause B12 deficiency, right? And classify RBC disorders according to etiology. You can talk about uh, anemias, um, hemolytic anemias, nutritional anemias, and hypoprolifer, like aplastic anemias and myelophthysic anemias. You can classify them according to etiology, whatever you know. If that carries a little bit more weightage, you can go into the depths of hemolytic anemia, saying intravascular, extravascular hemolysis, or an intracorpuscular defect, or an extracorpuscular defect. You can classify like that as well, fine. That's also a very classical scenario, can expect. Though not as a long answer, but yes, there's one more uh, extra question which makes it a long answer, fine. Let's go to the next one, fine. There are lots and lots of scenarios here for us to discuss. I'm not going to this, it's much simpler here. Okay, 10-year-old person was administered an analgesic injection, IM, and immediately collapsed. A very, very, very classical thing, right? This might, unfortunately, may be a scenario which might you might encounter when you go to your internship. Immediate collapse which is always only one thing you have to remember, anaphylactic shock, okay? Anaphylaxis is the reason. Without a sensitization, immediate collapse, difficulty in breathing, laryngeal edema, all of them are characteristic features of anaphylaxis. Do remember that, fine? It's, I think it's a short answer, but still, they have given a scenario-based question in quite a few of the short answers. It makes you actually be well prepared for your third year, final year, and makes you an amazing doctor, fine? Let's go to the next one. A 10-year-old person present with an evening rise of temperature, very classical symptom, Neck notes, again, an important thing. His fa father, right, his father was treated for cough with expectation for six months. So there's a family history there, right? And uh, it's a kid, what's the diagnosis? Describe the morphology of the lesion, right? It's simple, right? it's a classical sign of tuberculosis. Fever, chills, evening rise of temperature, loss of weight, loss of appetite, like cough, expectation, everything. Neck lymphadenopathy is diagnostic of tuberculosis, unless proven otherwise. And there's a classical family history of six months, correct? Cough, expectation, more than three months, you're going to obviously think of tuberculosis. Three weeks, you're going to think of tuberculosis in the National TB Control Program, right? So it's undoubtedly the classical one of tuberculosis. You know about the pathogenesis. 
write about chronic granulomas, write about the caseating lesions, write about the miliary tuberculosis, primary, secondary tuberculosis, wherever part of the body it's going to destroy, cause caseation, cause necrosis, and this is in microscopic granuloma. Fine, great. Let's go to the next one. A 30 year old person present with fever with rigors, history of dark colored urine after admission and also had a cloudy consciousness. What's the diagnosis and what's the role of peripheral smear in the diagnosis, right? I'll just uh, pull it a little bit up because this is something which is a tricky one, right? Because here I cannot pinpoint to one diagnosis. I uh, Maybe the examiner had something in mind, so they gave this exactly thing, but this history is a bit vague and can fit in multiple things, right? 30 year old person, fever with rigors. Can be any normal fever, right? And I have a dark colored urine. Is it hematuria or is it hepatitis related urine? The dark darkness, we're not sure about it, fine. And since the question is on peripheral smear finding and diagnosis, I can slightly rule out hepatitis, something related to hematological disorder, right? Next, again, fever with rigors and a dark colored urine, this could be the reason, if it's a hematology related disorder, it's a reason for your intravascular hemolysis, right? So only in intravascular hemolysis, you'll have a dark colored urine, provided because the peripheral smear finding is there, I'm linking it to a hematological disorder. Now I have two issues here. I can give differential diagnosis here. I'm not jumping into diagnosis. Fever with rigor with intravascular hemolysis, G6PD could be a possibility, right? Glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency can definitely cause this, that's one. Second, can it be malaria? A simple falcipam malaria, right? Black water fever. That's also possible because malaria can also cause lysis, right? Or it could be infection related autoimmune lysis, right? There are multiple possibilities. But one, I want you to stress on intravascular hemolysis because of the RBC and a dark colored urine and a fever with rigors. These are the two possibilities. Cloudy conscious, I'm not sure. Maybe a very sudden massive hemolysis resulting in cloudy consciousness. I'm not able to exactly relate to it. So these are my differential diagnosis. If something is vague, think for a time for a time and definitely you will you will be able to answer the question right comment in the below section what you need to examine what questions you found difficult we'll create a video for that see you soon till then bye bye from bye bye